Come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. (laughs) Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Coming at you every Saturday. Whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination which you can help us out by with by hitting that like or subscribe button these are the internet radio superstars michaela sean and i'm colin that was i don't feel worthy of that introduction right now i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> just roll with it sean just roll with the we'll energy get there. we'll get there yes starring no no yeah. no okay. no uh, we are not the stars the movies are the stars that's, that's true right. that's yeah, true yeah. so what yeah. do we watch tonight well i mean Keep going. Uh, yep, yeah. well, tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Colin. Colin. <laughs> <laughs> what we watched tonight? We watched a movie with one of the most iconic titles in American cinema history, mm-hmm. Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. Great title. It is because it conjures up images like yes. right there. Yep. Yeah. Right? It's well, like, like God damn it, I want a cigarette right now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you have an idea of what this movie's going to be, but is this the movie you think it's going to be? Well, you're going to have to stay tuned and find out. <laughs> From the year. 1991. 91. Wow. All right. Directed by? Simon Winsor. Simon Winsor. Sounds familiar. Maybe just Yeah, he's been there. around all over the place. What's he's he made a bunch of hit movies. Well, he made one that uh, probably none of you guys remember, Daryl. I remember Daryl with the kid. A- <laughs> D-A-R-Y-L. I remember that movie. Yeah. Oh, I looked it up. Daryl, so what it stood for. I haven't for, seen that in like 30 years, but yeah. That was uh, Data yeah. Analyzing Robot Youth Life Form. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Daryl. Didn't he get his? Didn't he get lost and his yeah. mind wiped and his family picked yeah, him so up? Yes, he forgets that he's a robot yes. kid. I, <laughs> oh, no. You should see I this need, movie. Is this going to be your pick for next week now, Sean? You pivot <laughs> no, to Daryl. No, I don't think it's... See, I don't remember. That's all I remember. Yeah. About but I want to see this rediscovery journey. Right, true. And I'm, <laughs> I'm the government probably comes after yep. him to reclaim yep. him. It's ET, but it's yeah, ET yeah, clone. Yeah. Yes. It's 1985, so it's yeah. right there. But I, yeah. for some reason, I always get that one confused with Explorers. I, I know they're yeah. different movies, but in my mind, they're related. Uh, he also did. Uh, <laughs> He did a movie called Quigley Down Under. Ooh, that's oh, a yeah. great movie. Yeah, yeah. Movie. And so that's like an Australian western. Yeah, yeah it's with Alan Rickman and Tom Selleck. Yep. And, oh, yeah. that's a good one. And good then one. this is his next movie. Okay. It's nice. Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. And then he would go on to do Free Willy. Oh, oh, oh that's a pivot. Yep. <laughs> there you go. He also did... Um, with Mike, that Michael Jackson song? Yeah. The, oh, yep. Beautiful. That was yep. when the that's movies his... still had synergy with pop music. It I did. miss that era. Uh, I miss it. On VHS, Free Willy starts with that music It's the video music video. Yeah. You have to watch <laughs> that to get to the movie. Yes. yes. And it's. Yeah. I watch it every time. I think I have all the lyrics that song burned into my <laughs> brain just because, it, yeah, it was so ubiquitous with the movie. Yep. And then, didn't they play it again in the end credits? Pro- I think yeah. so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like we're getting like our money out of it. Yeah. His biggest hit. I mean, how many sequels are there to that? I'm not even sure. Four? There's at least four? Probably four? Oh, four? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I didn't quite get into, like, the the buddy movies where yeah. Willie's playing sports and shit. <laughs> right. Did, and spinoffs with the puppies and stuff. Yeah. Right. It's not yeah. that. It's not that. But yeah, there were a couple of them. They, that was they like free the... him and then there's whalers and then they, 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 there's another thing. He's, Willie's always getting into trouble. But there was then he's got like a family. Free Willie goes bananas. Or oh, the love of no. Free Willie. Or, yeah. oh. <laughs> free Willie Hawaiian vacation. <laughs> yeah. <you know>? oh. <laughs> free Willie, uh, a fishy mystery, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, Simon showed up in one. Simon Winsor is one movie away from the Saturday Night Freak Show because okay. he also did the Phantom, I which would... we saw. He did the Phantom. That's this, a, oh. this guy's a winner in my book. <laughs> the Phantom. What? But Oof. then he did he did two movies. He uh, likes working with the Baldwin's, huh? Yeah, <laughs> and, and two movies with Paul Hogan. He did. Uh, wait, what, is that Lightning Jack? Is that Cuba Gooding Jr. or, or was it Paul Hogan? Am I thinking of a, the wrong I... movie? Don't know. Was I don't that know. like a boxing uh, kangaroo? I mean, he, he did uh, uh, Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that so one's really bad. Yeah. Less, <laughs> yeah. The lesser yeah. of the uh, <laughs> three movies? There's three Crocodile Dundee movies? Uh, yeah, at yes. least, I think, yes. with Paul Hogan. Yes. yes. And um, one <laughs> uh, uh, shitty Super Bowl tease. <laughs> yeah. But that's for another day. But the uh, I'm surprised you didn't recognize the writer on this movie, Sean. Uh Don Michael Paul. So he he was an actor, uh, you know, started off as an actor. Then he became a writer. And then he became, oh, look it up. I'm going to tell you. Oh, and you're going to go like, oh, like. shit. 
Oh, okay. Um, I, don't read any of I just want to know what he looks like. Don Michael Paul. Yeah, and then he became a director. So Don Michael Paul, I knew who he was because he was in a movie called Rich Girl with uh, Jill Schlo- Sholin, which never like appeared anywhere. But like he was in a rock band. She falls in love with him and it played at the movie theater I worked at for like a week. And <laughs> nice. then like no one has ever heard of this movie, and I liked her. Um, it looks kind of familiar. Apparently, he was an uncredited writer who wrote additional material for Cyborg. Nice. <laughs> okay. Gonna let that sink in for a little bit because we've seen Cyborg. Yeah. And like, what Oof, exactly? There wasn't much script there. Yeah. Right. What's required on the scripting? Yeah. Oh, when yeah. they had, didn't they have to change that? Weren't they using sets from Spider Man? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So. And we, it was like written in a week or something yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. it's credited to somebody else. But apparently, he did extra work. Oh. To, to, and know, that's still doctor. the end result we got, huh? Yeah, <laughs> there was extra effort put into that movie. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, he became a director, and uh, he's responsible for um, a lot of sequels, like you know, Scorpion King Two oh, and no. uh, uh, Jarhead Two. And oh, Jarhead, no. there's a sequel to Jarhead. There oh are- yeah, yeah. yeah. I think four Jarhead movies. There's a bunch of Jarhead movies. There's a Jarhead universe. There is. And it's like they. It's like the shooter movie. Or no, yeah, wait, the, there's more than one shooter yeah, movie? Yeah, what? No, Sniper. Sniper. There's I was like, the oh, Mark yeah, the Wahlberg yeah, yeah, shooter right. movie? Sniper, like, sniper movies. Wow. Okay. Well, oh my he, goodness. Um, okay. I'm learning a lot did, today. Uh, kindergarten See, this cop, is the, too. Okay. The this is, I knew about that one. Sequels, yeah. Michaela. You see yeah. what you're missing? <laughs> Things well, that will blow your mind. That's right, because... Uh, Kindergarten Cop 2? Kindergarten Cop, the one with Dolph, Dolph Lundgren. Lundgren. Oh, yes. no. But he also directed Tremors 5. Oh. Sean, this is your guy. Tremors 6. Yeah, no, and he's doing all the fucking Tremors bad 7. movies. He did, like, The Cold Day in Hell, or Aftershocks, Cold Day in Hell, and... Oh, Aftershocks uh, is the second one. It was, I thought it said Terminus 5. Hold on. Hold Terminus on. Terminus 5 me. is Bloodlines. Oh, Bloodlines. Sorry. <laughs> which, yes. Which yes, we've yes. talked about. Stop using Bloodlines. Believe, yeah. That's yeah. another one. It was, yeah, it, was, it was Bloodlines, A Cold Day in Hell, yeah. and Shrieker Island. Oh, sweet Jesus. So there you go. All right. Oh, he also did one of the Death, death Race Beyond Anarchy. So this is just the same and, and guy. Scorpion King Book of Souls. I'm assuming Ooh. that's Sto- Scorpion King 2. I don't even know. Starring Chuck Liddell. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, that's the tail wow. pool behind this this movie. Wow. That's some crazy. <laughs> kind of explains a lot. And then in front of the camera, we have <laughs> Don Johnson. Mm-hmm. Don goddamn Johnson. Mm-hmm. Who was writing, you know, I mean, like, because this is 91, right? I mean, Miami Vice, I want to say, was 1985. Yeah, when, when did he, that go to? 85? Uh, no, it ran for several years, um, but it probably was over by this point. And he was doing movies. You know, he was in uh, The Hot Spot, Dennis Hopper directed with Virginia Madsen. Or was that Jennifer Connelly? I think they're both in it, actually. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Um, 84 to 89. 84 to 86. Yep. So he was yeah. just released from his yep. Miami Vice contract <laughs> right. and landed Harley Davidson in The Marlboro Man, yeah, where he like... plays The Marlboro Man. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So the Marlboro man. He's like, I need another role where I can have my shirt mostly open. Right. Yeah. But you know, he's got that uh, whole cowboy thing going on. Because, I mean, yeah. I guess, you know, when you think of the Marlboro man, I guess that's the question. Do you think of the Marlboro man when I say those words? What is conjured in your mind? It's like old ads, like the print ads with him, with the, like the hat pulled down. Yeah. I see a faceless cowboy. Like yeah. Yeah. That's what I see. The yeah. hat just kind of obscuring his face so he could be anybody. I see him more kind of like, le- like the, yeah, the hat's obscuring his face, but he's more good doing that like turn on the horse where he like leans his shoulder yeah. down and like mm-hmm. cigarettes hang out of his mouth, but he's on the back of a horse yeah. with those gloves that Don Johnson has. That's yeah. what I'm yeah. yeah. I'm sure these were all ads. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And, and that's the thing. I guess, you know, Congress put a stop to that. Eventually, yeah. the Marlboro Man was invented Done. in 1954. He died, didn't he? Didn't we bury oh, him? Oh, shit. A lot of them did. Well, no, I mean, uh, like, <laughs> I think the character died. Oh, I, I think, think so. Wait, wait, wait like, him. in canon? like, And I think in Joe the Campbell canon got of our cancer, pop culture? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, what? Not, Is not, this Twitter nonsense? No. Has to be. There's no way that Camel Cigarettes said that Joe Camel got cancer and okay. died. Or that the Marlboro Man, the Marlboro yeah, man just, just rides off into the sunset or something at the... They're, I think they killed him. They did kill be him. They just re- they retired him. I'm sure he went off to pasture somewhere. Like, uh, all the, but yeah, I think five of them, five of the Marlboro men models died yeah. of cancer. Shocker. Some of them, yeah. you know, went into anti-smoking activism and stuff like that. Like, sure. yeah. Uh, but I mean, it was like a huge thing that you would have. Yeah, a guy, you know, uh, representing, you know, encouraging you to smoke, mm-hmm. and a camel 
uh, cartoon camel yep. encouraging you to smoke. Mm -hmm. We don't have those, that anymore. Those were the days. Right? I know those were the days. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna tell my kid one day. Cartoon camel used to tell tell me to smoke. I re yeah, and I remember my relatives collecting the like camel points. Yep, camel uh, points. Oh yeah, yeah. Your camel I did that. windbreaker. Yes, yep. and that's how you Get know your, your parents camel. smoked a shit yep. ton your if you had cooler. the windbreaker. You yeah. got the camel lighter. Yeah, lighter camel ashtray was like an easy one to get. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yep. you get that nice leather jacket, but you got to get like six hundred thousand camel yes. bucks. <laughs> but a lot of it. cartons, a lot of cartons, a lot of cartons of cigarettes. People wear that shit and they're proud. Yep, you kids don't even. Even no. yeah. <laughs> you and your vapes. Yeah. Um, the Marlboro Man. They bring him back, but for vaping. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. You, so you joke, but it's going to happen. It could. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. They can't do it. I think it's a. I think the, I think it's a the legislation yeah. that killed these guys. Yeah. Uh, also killed uh, you know any future mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. There's no like tobacco advertising of any kind they anymore yeah, is there like not it. even billboards or anything and, and i mean I, I think probably you know we were talking off mic earlier but i think one of probably one of the bigger uh smoking uh encouragements was movies you know people oh, smoking yeah. in the movies oh, yeah. and the movies got all high and moral on us and said we're we're gonna when uh, the thing that cracked me up was when like a movie would be rated pg-13 for smoke right right <laughs> you know i'm like okay but yeah. you know i get that it's uh i remember and Lethal Weapon and Riggs and Murtaugh because Riggs smoke all the time and Lethal mm. Weapon 3. They're like, eat dog biscuits. <laughs> it was a whole thing about like, he's going to quit smoking cigarettes. Well, that's uh, like, so I, I recently as in, like a year ago did my first ever watch of Sex in the City and I was shocked at how much they smoke in every single scene. They talk about smoking. Smoking's like a personality oh, wow. trait in yeah. that show. And that was 99 to like 2003 or four. So like long, not that long ago, like, but we're in the timeline of smoking. I guess that's ancient history. Like, yeah. how, and it's like, like the main Although, character's personality trait is she loves to smoke. Like, right. it's Although, crazy. HBO it was the edgy network. That's so true. It's, it's like they're handing out cigarettes on that. Network, <laughs> yeah, like, yes. Smoking the show. I know that's why it's like you're never going to get like an accurate like you know uh, oh, Stranger Things. Everybody should be smoking. Everyone oh. should be smoking to <laughs> death. You should just you walk into a room and yes. it's just full of cloud no. smoke. There all the be, fabrics all the should be tinted yellow. Yeah. 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 Everything. <laughs> yes. No. It's too clean. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a it sanitizer. That's, yes. problem. That's one of my clean. problems. It's too clean to sanitize. It's not brown enough it's or yellow enough. Yeah, no, You just need that haze. Yes. I mean, it was a haze. Jesus Christ, yeah. you walked into a bar yeah. and you could smell pee. Or you couldn't because <laughs> yeah. of the smoke smell. I remember right. that was the thing Like when they right. outlawed it. You can walk into a bar, you're like, huh, huh it smells uh, funky in here. <laughs> yeah, then they that's, got wise that smoke that. is really like, covering you know, up a lot. At the very least, they could like casually acknowledge it by like, you remember when you go to a restaurant and they'd say smoking or non? Yeah. Say it, just have like a waitress say that to them. It's the and see, yeah, right. Yeah, you know? right the ludicrousness yeah. of going to Hardee's and sitting in the non-smoking section as yeah. a child. Yeah, just smoke. <laughs> yes, <and> smoke billowed. <laughs> yeah. other people to me, my child lungs. I remember when the when we got uh, our first IHOP here in town. <laughs> yeah, it, this smoking section has legit walls and yeah. a door that shuts. It had its own oh, ventilation. Yeah. Yes, and I was like, it oh was, wow, this it was is... the most advanced smoking yeah. section I had ever seen as a kid. That was fascinating because it's like, oh my god, it actually is like sealing it off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was like, it was wild. Oh man, can you imagine if you were like indoors somewhere, you saw somebody smoking indoors? Like nowadays, you'd be like, "What? What the is fuck? All right?" Like, yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. I see somebody smoking a cigarette and not a vape nowadays. I'm like, "Who the fuck still where smokes cigarettes?" I'm like, "Yeah, where did they drop out of a time portal or something?" Yeah. You know, who still smoke cigarettes. Hmm. Marlboro Man and Harley Davidson. Harley yeah. Davidson, played by. Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke, yes. Yeah. Mickey Rourke. Who looks like Bruce Willis, Who looks apparently. looks like Bruce Willis. I, I, I'm realizing I've never seen his pre, like, damage face. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think I'd ever seen I it before seen this. I have seen a lot either. Like, this stuff, yeah, he looks. This looked like a Daisy weird deep. This movie. Yeah, it looked like a Bruce Willis deep fake for a lot oh, of this movie. Yeah, I was like, did. it's tripping me out a little so bit. It was, it was a Baldwin deep fake in here, too, yes. but not a good one. Yes. Because it feels to one. me, I think, like, this is, 1991 is, like, at the end, like, Mickey Rourke's, Rourke's career seems to me it's like split into two halves, right? Mm -hmm. There's the there's the up until 1991, 92, and then he goes and wants to become a uh, a, a boxer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, like for real, right? Right. I and this. then he comes, then he comes back to acting, and then all of a sudden, you know, ends up in the wrestler, and then there's Oscars, yep. and then or Oscar talk. I can't remember if he, he actually did not won. win the Oscar. No, but then the Iron Man two, and you know, yep. then, then right. he flamed out of that uh, career. Sin City was in there somewhere too. Yeah, yeah. there was yeah. Uh, like a Bloodshot movie or something like that. He mm -hmm. was in. Yeah, there were yeah. some things. Domino. 
I think Domino. that was Domino. Pre, that's that was right. Pre, but that was on like the the comeback trail. Yes. Right? He was yeah. kind of paying Sin his City. dues. Sin City. Sin City. Yeah. Sin City was a big deal. Sin I think City was for a him. big one for him. He's yeah. so good in it too. He He's is perfect. so good in that movie there's literally a shot in this movie where it's just like holy shit it's like it's like a, it's he's in a doorway there's a light in the hallway yes. shining there's a him. naked woman in bed and all like lit perfectly shoulder yeah. and he's just turning and he's just smoking yep and, <laughs> and you're like that's beautiful that's the sin shit, city shot it like really that's is. and it's just it's yeah. gorgeous yeah I can't even remember whose title. Was that like the Mickey Rourke credit or that was like a Simon Windsor film or something yeah. like that? Or yeah. Like who got that shot? <laughs> right. They obscured right. I was still it looking at the, the shot. I didn't even yeah, see Yeah, I know. The but they put a credit over it. Ah, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if we can find it for our it socials. great. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but, I feel like I, in my memory, Mickey Rourke lives as like a post the wrestler mm-hmm. figure. Yeah, that's, well, that's where he is for me too. Yeah. Because he was, I think, like heavy into... Um, I mean, he was a, like a serious dramatic actor. A guy mm-hmm. who came up, what, you know, nine, like Barfly, movie, right? Weeks? No, what did he, do? he did. That was toward the the. That was in this era, I think, okay. like eighty nine. That was uh, Wild Orchid, right? The mm-hmm. erotic thriller oh, movie, right. or mm-hmm. just erotic movie, maybe <laughs> that, that that those were. But um, I mean, and the horror fans will remember him for Angel Heart. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, wasn't he in Barfly too? Yeah, Barfly. Yeah. But that's, I mean, a great. That got a lot of acclaim, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He would do like a lot of um, uh, stuff like that that mm-hmm. was, you know, Barry Levinson's diner. And, you know, I mean, like mm-hmm. he was an up and coming, like his career could have gone, like he could have been, I think, like, you know, uh, extremely well respected yeah. right. actor, then f- just said, fuck it all. I think, but see, fuck looking, it all, I'm going to raise Chihuahuas. Looking at. Yeah. Oh, Robert what, Rodriguez. Really? Robert put him in, Rodriguez. Uh, yes, yeah. there it is. From Sin City, put him in Once Upon a Time in, in Mexico. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yes, I forgot about that. Where he's then constantly he just, holding a dog's asshole. Yeah, and, and when he would do, like, interviews on those, uh, you know, on the promotional tours for those movies, you know, he would talk about the regret that he had, but it was just like he seemed like a space alien at that point. It was mm-hmm. like, what the hell? Yeah. You know, he's like, he doesn't look at any of his old stuff, and probably because he can't stand to see himself you know before he i mean he really did like you know a number on himself yeah Yeah, yeah. i mean he was like a prize fighter so is that for a portion of his career i don't know much about mickey rourke i'm realizing but like is so is his i'm trying not to be mean is his face the way it is now with his face because of like corrective surgery like okay okay it's like reconstruction okay that makes sense yeah i mean it was just yeah one of those things where he was uh you know an actor and then thought that it was you know one of those i think a lot of actors have that kind of crisis of faith at some point oh yeah where they're like what i'm doing is meaningless yep <laughs> you know <Yeah>. <laughs> it's yes. like this like, is just nothing. pretend it means nothing i'm worthless and so he's like i'm going to change careers do something else and the thing that mattered to him was being a boxer i think he was in a boxing movie that no no i can't remember the mm-hmm. uh, the title of it but he that. was in one and i think that kind of either he did it because he was interested in boxing or that was the one that kind of encouraged the idea gotcha and then he became a uh, a professional boxer um so he plays harley davidson mm-hmm. i mean we're not even given like he has another name his name no. in this movie is harley davidson yeah that's it mm-hmm. and he wears one of the uh best motorcycle jackets i've ever seen in a movie i'm gonna say it's that. a whole set it's yeah. got matching <laughs> pants yeah it's an outfit. matching leather pants too yeah 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 I, and part of i think the reason why i wanted to bring this tonight because i i do have like a collection of movie posters up in the in the, uh, yes. the basement Spent, and been we, staring yeah. at this poster for five years. plus years now it, years. wondering what is this movie movie about i think that poster is like a great piece of like photography of yeah. art you know it's, it's this kind of like you know the bike <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and then you have like these two american icons it's like it almost doesn't matter who their faces are it's just you know <laughs> you know that's the yeah. moral with that title like <laughs> yeah it's just bam it goes together like uh peanut butter and chocolate he was a double team Oh yeah, you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I used yeah. to watch that fucking movie all the time. Yep, Damn. yep. That's the one with Dennis Rodman in it. Yes. Yeah. That's Jean Claude Van Damme in Dennis. Yeah. yeah. See, has that movie. been done on the show? I believe we watched that Damn. one. Okay. Wait, wait, did we? No, we have not we, watched. Double we team. watched the other one. Double, double. Um, did we watch Double Team? No. What was the other one? The one oh, where he oh. played twins. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a double something. Double impact. Double no, impact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the one we watched. Johnny um, handsome, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's not, that's not Homeboy. the one. Yep, that's the there you go. One. Um, okay, so there's a disclaimer at the front of this movie that there's no endorsement. 
<laughs> yeah. Does that mean that these? How did they get? How did they make this movie? Yeah, because you'd think that's a trademark infringement right. by having the Marlboro Man in your movie, but they're like, no, it's just a cowboy, but he's called Marlboro Man or Marlboro throughout the entire thing, right? And this, I mean, they might see this as like great advertising. I wonder if that was they just like gifted it or whatever. Did they have to pay money to actually? I don't know the answer to this to tell you the truth. Damn, but I mean, he drives a Harley Davidson bike. I he believe. does, yeah. Uh, there was may- probably any agreements. They're yeah. like, we're not endorsing this, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You Maybe they it. couldn't, like, uh, yeah. they couldn't say fuck Harley Davidson. Yeah. Right. But yeah, it's, it's just cr- like, I guess you never really see like a close up box of like Marlboro cigarettes or anything, right? So, like, he's always smoking them. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And I, you do see the Harley Davidson logo a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, yeah, I don't. But they can always be like, it's his name. He just <laughs> yeah. puts his name on everything. <laughs> but yeah, the lawyers got after them uh, and had them uh, put a disclaimer at the front of the movie. Yep. This movie, uh, for no apparent reason that I can discern, takes place in the year 1996. Now, we, I got to say <laughs> that again, like, that's the future yep. from 1991. Um, in the year 1996, the future. The great Which, joke is that wh- Burbank is an airport. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point of making it just five years in the future? Right. Like, like you either got to go like 30 years or more, you know, like what, right. what difference? <laughs> uh, there's not much difference between 1991 and 1996. Mm-hmm. L- less neon, more grunge. Yeah. That's... I that's mean, it. what? Because yeah, that's what you're like. Okay, so what? Why would you do that? Because you know, well, you, first of all, you think like you know, if you're if you're a film producer, then you've got uh, a budget outlay, right? The, yeah. Now you're, you're doing you're doing a futuristic mu- movie. How much is this going to cost? And they're like, <laughs> let no. me tell you, <laughs> it's only five years in the future, so nothing. All nothing we got to do is make a billboard of a weird round shaped car and some trench coats, and we're good. Yeah. There was an ad for uh, Die Hardest Five. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> better title than uh the <laughs> other die hard sequels die hard is five see that's where i was just like okay how seriously should i be taking this movie? right so because I, I didn't know i didn't know what we were getting because i also got a little bit of the uh the vibe of that one fucking movie that i hate with peter weller the uh, fan no um, um with jeff goldblum the Peter Weller and Jeff Goldblum. You know, where they, they team up and Jeff Goldblum's the cowboy. And Oh, yeah. Buckaroo Bonzo. Buckaroo Bonzo. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Got, yeah, like, yeah. Just that feeling. Like, the same era and everything. So I was just like, okay, what is this movie? Yeah. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Well, is, I mean, when I watch, especially when I was watching it tonight, I'm like, this is like the structure of this movie is a Western. Like, and then you go like, well, how far have we really come from the, like the American Western, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, informs so many goddamn movies yeah, that right. we've ever. He's jumping on the wagon to, yeah, to, it's a, he rides the horse up to it, jumps on the back of the wagon, gonna steal everything out of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they literally yeah. run yeah. away from town on a train car like bums. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Westerns died, but everything like about them because they were such a huge thing for so long, they seeped into the rest cultural of, seepage. Yes, there's yeah. this is good cultural seepage. Yeah. <laughs> well, they tip the hat. At one point they walk into a bar and there's like Fuck. a shrine to John Wayne As that they salute yeah. and it's like, okay, well, you know, you got a cowboy and a biker, which I you know, so these are the outlaws, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, okay, so this has been around at least because it's a buddy uh it's not a comedy. It's not really an action movie. It's not a science fiction movie. It's even a buddy it western? Place, uh, is it a buddy western? <laughs> a a neo a western? Of, well, yeah. Um, it's a tiny bit of all those things you said. Not, yeah. Just not completely. Like, right. couldn't peg it down as just that. Right. Because I figure that, you know, has its, you know, it's like uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid or something mm-hmm. like that, right? You're going to go along with lovable outlaws. Yeah. On an, uh, on an adventure. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to involve, they're going to go into bars. There's going to be bar fights. They're going to eventually be a greedy, uh, well, I guess he's a developer because he wants to take their bar. Um, you have. Uh, I was trying to steal land. The, well, the, the stagecoach heist, which stage I guess, or the, or the train heist, they are on a train, like you said, at some point. There's uh, some point somebody's going to jump off a roof. Yep. Usually it's only off of a bar room roof. Or yeah, like two saloon. stories up and usually onto <laughs> right. the back of a horse or something. Like yeah, that. right. Exactly. <laughs> and then a showdown eventually, like, uh, you know, some some high noon kind of. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, Western. So, uh, what's this movie about? How do we get into Well, okay. Let me ask you this. Because... <laughs> I like to see this movie in uh, like act chunks. 
I actually, uh, maybe gotcha. I like to see a lot of movies that way because some <laughs> acts are better than others. Yep. Yes. Uh, and the first act is usually always the strongest. I mean, like what? Ninety five percent. Almost time, always. I think yeah. <laughs> the first act is like the strongest part of your movie. How did this one do? And what happened in the first act of the movie? How are we introduced to our hero characters, anti-heroes? Isn't, isn't Harley riding back into town? Yeah. Because he's like out in somewhere, uh, Phoenix or something, and mm-hmm. he rides to uh, to California, to, to Los Angeles. Yes. Mm-hmm. To Burbank. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes, to yep. Burbank. Where does he fucking go? He yeah, just, I'm trying to remember the first act. Of the well, he just he, well, it's a montage of him riding. Yep, right? yep. And then to "Wanted Dead or Alive" by That's right. uh, Bon yep. Jovi. Of perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh yeah, the music yep. video that started this, right? <laughs> yeah, because right. the credits were literally the whole length of that song. Mm-hmm. It was a full on music video. Yep. And we're told that gas costs uh, three ninety nine a gallon. You know, oh yeah, this I is wish. The future. <laughs> I wish. Right. Well, uh, I do remember, like I said, you know, like when I first saw this, I think gas was like if it was a buck, yeah. a gallon. You know, and you're like, ooh, the yes. future, you know. Um, <laughs> the future's going to suck. Mm-hmm. But we're also told, I think, in, in the very beginning of the movie, right, uh, where he awakens next to this anonymous naked woman in a, in a hotel room on New Year's Eve or something, mm-hmm. the 4th of July. 4th of, July. 4th of July. July. Happy birthday, America. Yep. Uh, we're told over a radio broadcast that there's a new drug in the future. Blue Crystal Dream or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what was I mean? Like this like, was a thing that was also happening like in the nineties. You look at like RoboCop two yeah. or you know like all mm-hmm. these where they have the war on drugs. Yeah, but it's weird. Why don't they just use a drug? Yeah. Why does it? Why does it always have to be some made up future thing or something that doesn't? Yeah. I th- maybe is that like a liability maybe real drugs thing? A little too close to home. Yeah. And they're yeah. just like let's just make it up so it's less. Let's not so give they, kids ideas. If nothing else, so that the media and other people can't like get on them for this shit. Mm-hmm. It's more. It feels more movie like if it's a made up drug. It doesn't seem as serious. I'm gonna say maybe. I think that's why. Because to me, like I nobody would... can point at it and go, "Look what you're doing." You're, you're glamorizing, yeah, yeah, glamorizing cocaine or whatever. Yep. It's, it's like, like well, we made this one up. Yeah, this is just a blue brick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's uh, because it hadn't been okay, melted down Okay, but it's yet. a right. blue, like, it's like a blue gel-filled brick. <laughs> like, they're tilting it, and it's like a little mini aquarium sloshing around in there. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Stuff. In, a, in, like, one of those, like, um, vacuum seal bags yeah. is what it looks like it's in. That's right. We're also told that it's, uh, uh, you, somehow you put it in, you, you, your you take eyes. it through your eyes and then it tells you lies, right? Yeah. But nowhere in the movie do we actually see anybody doing nope. this drug. We never meet a whole populace of people who are strung out on nope. this drug. Right. We're That's told the, it's they're horrible. All dead, Colin. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because one in seven people die. <laughs> Apparently. Those are terrible odds, so yeah. But is that weird that a movie that makes itself about a drug, like you never see the after effects of anybody using the drug. Nobody's hooked on it. Nobody's trying to get off of it. There's not bums um, all around her hopped up on it i mean because the movie's not really about the drug the yeah. drug is just like a, a side quest yeah it yeah. is yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. there's, there's a lot of those yep in this movie. <laughs> lot, yes there is <laughs> um there's the prerequisite our uh he goes uh, to a gas station yeah and he, uh, uh, we have to show that he's you know obviously a badass so mm-hmm. he just walks in in the middle of a stick up he's like can i uh, can i get 10 i'm pumped too and the guy's going to blow his fucking head off. And the you know. cashier is um Kelly Hugh. Hugh, yes, f- from uh, Jason Takes Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. And X-Men 2. Yeah. X-Men United. Lady, yeah. Lady Deathstrike. I know she had like a this career arc in Hollywood mm-hmm. from Friday the 13th all the mm-hmm. way up to like major because I believe yeah. she was also, I think she was, no, I, mean, like, I think she was the lead uh, in, or not, aside from The Rock, mm-hmm. in The Scorpion King. Yeah. I think that I was Kelly so, Hugh. Yeah. So, Good for um, her. Yeah, I know. I was like, well, you made mm-hmm. it. Um, uh, you know, you had your stop off in Harley Davidson, the Marlboro man on, right. your, on your road, uh, upward. Um, and so then, uh, after he disarms these guys, you know, right. Cause he's a badass. Uh, he goes to this bar, right. Which is like, uh, it's a bar where apparently a plane has crashed into it like way back in the sixties and the plane is still there sticking out of it. According to, yeah, according to the newspaper on the wall behind mm-hmm. them, it's like, uh, plane crashes into bar. Pilot makes happy hour. Yeah, <laughs> like, which is pretty good. It's like, right. yep. And it's like, and they show the picture of it, it's like there's nothing surrounding the bar. And I mean, obviously it's being developed. So now there's just tall skyscrapers going up all around this thing. It's like the last vestige of the old era. Yeah, I mean, again, that's a Western thing, right? right. right? It's right. like, yeah. 
Um, so this, so I guess the, the, the main plot of it is basically like these guys consider this bar, uh, their home. This is where, uh, Harley Davidson hooks up with, uh, the Marlboro man for the first time in X number of years. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, over there's like a game of pool. There's arm wrestling. Fighting. There's arm wrestling. Another arm (laughs) wrestling movie guys. With big John stud. Yes. And I would have bet money he was in over the top, but he's not. He it looks like out. he should yes. be. Yeah. Yeah. Big John Studd was a WWE uh, wrestler. Yep. Uh, and he's big. He yeah. makes Mickey Rourke look tiny. Yeah. And he plays a character you're named Don't Jack not. Daniels. All right. Oh. Yeah. See, That's right. Of course. So the We're gonna stay with the brands. <laughs> he's Jack. Yep. Also in the bar is Jose Cuervo. Well, I didn't yep. I'm, I'm having flashbacks to Hudson Hawk where they're yep. all like Kit Kat and Snickers oh, and no. see yeah. that's yeah that's <laughs> yeah. the other thing I'm just oh well, <laughs> I don't want to think about that Sean Carlo Esposito oh, is yeah. in this movie yeah. playing uh Jimmy Giles and I'm like that name if that's a brand that one didn't don't know that uh, one. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know that one but he's in it and obviously like Jean Carlo Esposito has gone on to like massive fame through yes. uh Breaking Bad mm-hmm. you know and all that now um, yeah, and Maximum Overdrive, obviously. Yeah, I, uh, that's what I was going to say. The, the Freak Show audience will know him as the arcade player. Right. The unfortunate, doomed arcade player yes. in Maximum Overdrive. Um, also in the bar is um, Vanessa Williams. Mm-hmm. Isn't yeah. it? Didn't catch her. She had a brand name. Uh, but mm. she's a singer. Yeah, I didn't catch that either. And what's he called? Lulu? What's he yeah. called? Lulu. Yeah. yeah. He calls her Lulu. Um. There's all this, she, like, she's the Lululemon. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. And the owner of the bar is the old man. Mm-hmm. And so we learn that like these uh, guys from the bank are, they want to take the bar, right? Because the lease, he had a 30 year lease. Yeah. Okay. This is where I'm starting to have problems with this movie. <laughs> the financials? Yes. Because he said he signed a lease for 30 years for $350 a month. In 1966. And yes. he's 21 days from these 30 years of being up. Yep. You got a fucking good deal, man. <laughs> Accept it. Ex- like, you got a good deal. You you got your 30 years. If you, I'm sorry, you're paying 300. Could you imagine $350 a month for a commercial, like, yeah. lease? Not a house or an apartment. Like, this is a big bar that brings yeah. in a lot of people. And I'm just like, well, you're clearly not good with your money if you had 30 years of paying 350 and you didn't put something and aside. you didn't yeah. Yeah. save anything like and and now like they said they want two and a half million for five years and i'm like that sounds like the going rate in california <laughs> yeah. like i'm not surprised like but that's because they're the, because the airport has been yeah uh put in next yeah. door so now everybody wants to but even like who's I, who first of all what landlord's like yeah here's a 30-year lease yeah. That's like, number one. Yeah. <laughs> and number two is that they have been so irresponsible with their money, apparently, that uh, they have to grift their customers through the arm wrestling yes. tournament was like they were because all the bets were going right. <laughs> the wrong bad way. business. Oh, yeah. That's your problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so there's a I guess in the first 20 minutes of this movie, it feels like there's a lot of information given to you. Right. I mean, you get to know who these guys are mm-hmm. kind of. And I, I guess maybe that's the next thing. It's like, what distinguishing features uh, tells them apart other than physically? <laughs> I mean, what, how do you... Uh, one guy's mute? No, I mean, sorry, Harley oh. Davidson and the Marlboro oh, Man. Oh, like, well, personality-wise? Har- oh, like, well, Harley Davidson can't shoot at all. No, Harley seems like he's changed from what he was before, though, coming back now. Like, he's obviously, he's uh, maybe tamer. I don't know. He used, they used to live hard. Back in the day, from what I get from their mm-hmm. conversations and everything, and he's given a lot of stuff up as he's come back. Yeah, he's uh, become very ways. introspective, maybe. Yes, wiser with age or something. Yeah, yeah. There's a running joke, yeah, that he can't uh, shoot worth yep. of shit. Um, he really can't. Like what? What is he good at? He thinks we're told, but it turns out he's like dumb as a rock. I mean, like because yeah. uh, uh, Marlboro. Yeah. Is like you think too much, Harley. But Marlboro actually seems like he has a better overview. Uh, you know, thinks about like the the consequence oh, yeah. of something that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's no. demonstrated later on in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Right now, Harley yeah. has, does not think about the consequences of his stuff. He's yeah. like, well, this is what needs to happen right now, so this is what yeah. we're gonna do. Yeah, consequences. He acts game. first and thinks later. Yeah, right. And that is like, uh, well, you need to two point five million. Yeah, yeah. So right, he's gonna be unpredictable, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you need $2.5 million, so we're going to rob a bank. We're going to rob the bank that is robbing you. Yep. 
And so there we go, off to act two. So then the movie turns into a heist movie. Yes. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Okay, so, I mean... I love a heist movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so how does this... I mean, is there like a lot of action and stunts? Is it just uh, the the idea of the heist is cool? What, the what? coordination and planning that went into it is pretty interesting to watch. Like uh, pulling the car into the sewer and having the construction uniforms and all that stuff. And like the way they had everybody laid out to be like, all right, you're going to wave them through this intersection and then I'll jump on the back of the Brinks truck. And then <laughs> you'll climb down the ladder in the sewer and get in the truck that's in the sewer and drive it. And it's like... I, it's like ocean, all that Ocean's Eleven stuff coming together, you yeah. Know? And they don't f- seem like they're very serious when they take the, uh, you know, the the armored car drivers basically right. hostage in a gunpoint. Yeah, it's like they don't actually mean to kill anybody. There's like a whole thing about like they're it's, it's Robin like, Hood. Yeah, right. Because they're completely they're like well they're not completely amoral they're amoral anti-heroes who are okay with like living this life of i mean because basically they're homeless guys right who are just right. kind of going around robbing places they're drifters they're, they don't really rob places right they're just no it doesn't seem like it like even at the beginning of the movie harley's just he, he, after he stops the robbers behind the counter she says take as much gas as you can pump and he's like that's not good business and he goes out and gets his 10 bucks like he's got they have morals that they live by and everything yeah and we find out like later on that like neither one of them has killed anyone you know they've they have guns right. all around them all all the time and it seems like and they're there's... badasses are they <laughs> <sighs> there's i mean they think they are i think they think they are yeah are okay. they actually I, they've done i think some they things. get lucky a lot <laughs> yeah well there is that yeah and they've done well i think they've done some things that have probably built up their confidence probably way farther than it mm-hmm. needs to be especially for uh mickey rourke's character in this well there's always that like you know uh a thing where uh, the movie will build a character by uh, how other characters react to him it's like yeah. oh i never should have let you back in the bar harley or like you know there's the warning right. you know every time you come back here i love you but you remember what happened last time <laughs> yeah that always thing. that so it always ends with somebody going through a window yeah um, because I mean, if, if you have a big glass window, you know, uh, somebody's got to go through it. That's why why like, else does uh, it exist? You know? <laughs> a lot of big glass windows in those. Mm-hmm. Harley has slept with uh, Jack Daniels' uh, uh, wife, or they got married in the interim, and all this other. There's a whole bunch of drama going. Yeah. On. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so they stick this. Uh, they they pull this armored car heist, and then they have to deal with uh, the guys who are coming to, uh, you know, like the, the, the assassin uh, squad. Yeah. So what are we what are we looking at here? Well, they pull off the heist and everything. And then <laughs> the um, the Brinks truck hit an alarm and uh, up pulls a car, which I thought was like cops, SWAT team, what have you. Out comes five assassins with machine guns who are dressed like priests kind of like you ever see you, like know, you know nick cage was dressed in face off the priest thing where it yes. came down like yeah. around. it kind of looks like that but it's like uh head to toe or neck to toe kevlar mm-hmm. yeah that they're wearing and i was wondering if they were supposed to be like you know again thinking the western equivalent like a duster. 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 Yeah. Yeah. the word i was looking yeah. for. Yeah. this is the you know like the pinkerton agency yes. that right. you call into whatever uh, they're in the muscle, right? Yeah, right. Yes. That was what was missing. Was yeah. the hat? Otherwise, you'd be like, you know, yeah. 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 right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The hired gunslingers, but right. they're led by uh, Daniel Baldwin yes. in this movie. Yeah, um, I didn't. Ooh, I didn't know this one existed. <laughs> yeah, right, neither never, did I. Never seen it <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, what, it's like they um, like somebody just mushed up his face a little bit. It's just like you're kind of a bald one. <laughs> oh, there's like a major movie that Daniel uh, John Carpenter's Vampires. I've never seen that. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know I if I'd say that's a yeah. major movie, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, major enough. John yeah. Carpenter, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the, so this is like going with that science fiction thing, right? Like, it's it's probably like a quarter of an inch, th- or three quarters of an inch, th- uh, sorry, <laughs> smaller than that. Doing the, math. Yeah. Uh, fabric, right? Yeah. That is yeah. somehow bulletproof, because this is the future 
and uh, you don't actually need like any kind of padding or anything. It just bullets bounce off of it. I These guys yep. are no. impervious. To, and they that's have... why they all walk in a straight line together. <laughs> right. <laughs> Always. Are they like the Terminator? Is that what we're get, we have going on it here? It's like now they have like the Terminator after them. Yeah, because they they're pretty expressionless and just kind of walk forward in a straight line. And yeah, they're very and it feels robotic. Like they yeah. smash things with their hands sometimes yeah. when they get angry. I I legitimately laughed out loud when the. Uh, is it Jack Daniel that comes in on the motorcycle yeah. <laughs> and he slides it and like pushes it into them, but he opens the gas tank before he does it. So it leaves a trail and he lights it up. So there's a line of fire that pops up like a foot in front of them and they all jump at the same time over oh, yeah. this but line of fire. Thing, yeah. Yeah. Like, I think the like, motorcycle is still going at them. Yeah. yeah the motorcycle is going at and they jump over it and it's very funny. But the but- top half of their body does not move when they no, jump. So- it is just like, it yeah. is... The straightest up and it's down like, like plank Princess jump. Princess Peach yeah. jumping in yes. Mario 2. Just yes. And the, the motorcycle hits their car and yeah. it explodes, and explodes in the back. Yeah. fire all over the place. And yeah. uh, even though this is logistically impossible somehow, <laughs> because matter. like they're bulletproof and our heroes are unloading on them. And it's one of those things where like, you know, you're supposed to wait until they have to change their clip. Then yes. you fire. But no, it's just two guys. But two I think groups they stagger it though. Just, oh, no, they don't. They're like, cause I was watching, they cut and like the, the bad guys are unloading with like, you know, their machine guns yes. and they are shoot, you know, old cowboy style, like popping out going pow, pow, pow. <laughs> I'm running out of bullets, you know, or whatever yeah. we got to get. And then, you know, Jack Daniels comes in to save the day, how he knew they were going to be there. Well, I suppose because, uh, they told him the plan, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, he, he opted out because of Lulu and then, you know, there he shows up to save the day. Yep. There's a lot of that going on in this movie, especially at the end of it. You're like, well, we'll get there. So, uh, anyway, it turns out they did not steal two point five million dollars. Nope. Here comes the blue dream, blue crystal dream. Mm-hmm. Here comes the drug. Bam! So it turns out that it, that this is a plot twist. That uh, yeah, <laughs> they have robbed the bank, but the bank is actually in the drug dealing business, and the bank is led by Tom Sizemore, <laughs> Tom motherfucking Sizemore. <laughs> because if you want a villain in a movie. In the 90s. He's pretty good at it. So, I mean, just, uh, I guess that's the thing. It just feels like, you know, Sizemore has that kind of smug and slimy. Sliminess, you know, he does very mm-hmm. well. Yeah, especially yep. in this, you know, he's supposed to be like, you know, he, he lives on the, the top floor of this uh, bank building with Tia Carrere. Yeah. yeah apparently. Right. Does she even have any lines in this movie? She has a couple. When Watch they my first. Tale. Yeah, when they first meet her, yeah. Yeah, she got a couple lines and that's it. But yeah. this is a this is a year before Wayne's World. Yep. So she hadn't uh Her actually, star was rising. Yeah. <laughs> what year was True Lies? 94? 96? Oh, Somewhere in there, right? I thought it was 94, I could be wrong, but that's coming up. That's on her horizon as well. Yeah. We're, I'm going to say that's one of the greatest action movies of the One of the, the greatest action movies. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. 1994. I can't, 1994. I, can't, like, <laughs> I can't wait till that comes out on like Blu-ray I know. or something. Like, mm-hmm. it's gonna, like, everyone's waiting Held for it. Held hostage along with The Abyss by yeah. James Cameron yeah, uh, while he works on Avatar movies. Damn it, I'm going to go home and watch that. Um, wait, what, why does his working on Avatar have anything to do with this? I don't know. But he probably won't let anything go until he can approve. Yeah, uh, he owns his mo- all those Lightstorm movies. He bought them all back, so he owns it. I feel like there, Except we'd for rather have. Two, I think we'd rather have these Blu-ray releases in Avatar, right? Mm. Oh, I would. Yes. Like, <laughs> well, yes. there is. I think the HD versions, the rem- like Abyss mm-hmm. and probably I know Abyss went out there. Yeah, and, um, oh yeah. yeah, Abyss got its thing done because they they showed them working on it and yeah. mm-hmm. doing the audio for it. So I think True Lies is probably if you stream it now. Um, so now double cross, they have to try and get the money. The bad guys want the drugs. So So they they want to do a trade. Right. And so they pull off this trade very easily, which they also notice in the movie. It's like, man, it's too easy. Marlboro is just like, it's too easy, man. I don't know what's going on. Which like, I was also thinking because I was like, okay, this is the end of the movie, but we're only like 40 minutes into the movie. I was like, so this is, can't be the end. So this is too easy. Mm Yeah. That. And you're just like, well, you still have something of theirs you did not earn. Right. Mm -hmm. Like they're getting money for something they stole and everything. Like he's not gonna be too happy about that. I didn't think they'd be there. Um, when the bar got shot up and everything, because I'm like, old man's gonna die. They'll come back to it and find it all shot right, up, that's sort what of I thing. Too, yeah, but yeah. No, no. We need action. Well, honestly, again. what I thought, because they they end up, yeah, the trade is um, 
We'll give you the dope. You give us the money. They give them a briefcase full mm-hmm. of money. Yep. And then you're like, well, they're, they're, you know, because it, it's always one of those things where you open up the lid of the briefcase and there's yep. all the money. And underneath it is the bomb. And Something. it blows the whole yeah. place up, but it doesn't. I would have looked at everything. Yeah. Well, okay. And it, did we learn nothing from Nightmare Alley? You got to pull the first bill down and see what the rest of them mm, are. Right. Then you have to check. You have every, to make yeah. sure they're all 100s and not 100 on the top and then all ones underneath yeah. Yeah. it. Yeah. If yeah. anyone ever gives me a briefcase full of money, I'm yeah. checking that shit. You've got to flip through I've every it, bill. Yeah, I was yeah. like, this is a phone book in here. Yeah. yeah, no, not falling for that shit. Yeah, Just so waiting for the day. You're right, it is. It's like 40 minutes into the movie, and it does kind of feel like, okay, we've we've accomplished our, you know, we, that was we easy. got the money. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And then the bad guys come in, and sure enough, they kill the old man, and then they kill everybody else. Jose yeah. Cuervo gets killed. Jack mm-hmm. Daniels gets killed. Everybody's dead except for uh, Harley and, Davidson and, and uh, mm-hmm. Jimmy Giles. It was a Jimmy Giles, Jules Giles. Damn it. I need to know if that's a brand name. Esposito? Yeah. He died. Uh, he, well, yeah, I know. Yeah. And everybody gets killed, and so only the two guys are left, and so they're at their lowest point. Now, are they going to split up? They have the money still, even after everything got shot up. They yep. are wanted. They got to get out of town, so the heat dies down. And these are not inconspicuous people. Oh, my God. Like True. Terrible get-ups to have if you're wanted, because you stand out in a crowd. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys looking for a cowboy? Like, huh? There's one the, right there. The part when Marble Man's like, uh, like bandana fell down when they were doing the the Brinks truck break-in, and he was like, oh, shit, and pulled it back up. I'm like, you're the only <laughs> person dressed you. like a cowboy. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's going to give you away. Yes. And then they identify themselves, because he says something to Jose, and then he says, I'm Harley David. It's, or he's yeah. Harley Davidson and I'm the Marlboro Man. I'm yeah. like, okay, was well, that an alias? It turns but, out Marlboro Man has a name. He does. Robert. This is, yeah. <laughs> Robert Anderson, we find out by the very end of the movie. And it's Marlboro like, Man's name is Bob Anderson. Bob, Bob Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. I wonder, I'd change it too. Shit. Yeah. You should look that up and see if, if he was like, one of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or if, if the Marlboro Man actually had a name and if that was it or something like that. But or Harley Davidson, I think we're, we're to believe that is his actual name. Yeah, yeah we never get is, it. You know, have the last name Davidson and be like, all right, you're going to be Harley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he just went with it. Marlboro Man has a romantic relationship. Mm hmm. Uh, that we find out about because he takes uh, Harley's motorcycle. Because I think Harley's, like, women are just throwing themselves yeah. at Harley Davidson in bars. Uh, what, honey, right? Yep. Comes oh, yeah. up to him. And mm-hmm. and then at the end, there's, like, uh, this hitchhiker who's just, like, the world's foxiest hi- hitchhiker just, yes. like, standing on the side of the road. And yes. She's like, you go, you go in my way. And he's like, yeah, hop on. And then she wraps her legs around him on yes, the back of the I, motorcycle. And you're just like, what world is dream. this amazing place? He's, yeah. he's riding off into another music video, Colin. <laughs> or he's dying. And this yeah. is like... He needs a guitar and he needs a set. burnt toast? <laughs> but uh, uh, there's, a, there's a chase scene because uh, oh, a yeah. uh, 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 Marlboro man... Pisses off a cop. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so motorcycle cop is chasing him and then frisks him, then grabs his balls, and we're like, what's going on? And yeah. it turns out that that is the girl that he's been like seeing every time he comes to town. Yep. Or no, two, two times a, a, a month, she yep. says, yep. he right. comes by. And she says, But she starts off this conversation by saying, I'm getting married. Yeah. <laughs> like, after they've already <laughs> fucked. Like, yeah. Like, yep. yeah. And it's like... A, this Your is love triangle. End. Here we go. Yep. Uh, yeah. Do we need this? This is our second act complications. This is I Virginia mean, Slim, by yeah. the way. Uh, oh, played by Chelsea Field. Yeah, it brings yeah. Chelsea Field into this, so I'm okay with it. That's right, because yeah. we're putting yeah. her on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall Woo! of Fame. Uh, uh, MF Mad, the keeper of the Wall of Fame, wants us to know that uh, not only was she in uh, Masters of the Universe okay. as Tila, but we uh, recently had her on because she was in death spa so yep. welcome chelsea congratulations to the, yeah. welcome i feel like i have to stand up for this idea because i complain there's no sex and no love in movies anymore and this is kind of like what i'm talking about like this kind of subplot doesn't exist in movies anymore so i like it for out of like nostalgic attachment i feel like yeah uh, i don't know how much it adds to the movie as a whole but it does like i think it humanizes him a so bit do I. Yeah. I mean, but I think that's why I like those scenes also. Right. But I think, you know, it, it, I mean, this movie is kind of like representing the twilight of this era of, you know, buddy cop movies and action movies and stuff like that, where it's like all of these things, it feels like are kind of cliche. And I assume that's why, you know, in part mm-hmm. anyway, and also Hollywood's new prudishness that yeah. they kind yeah. of started weeding it out. Cause it's like, well, really. You know, they're, they're perfunctory to basically say there's, okay, there's a history and these are the words that you have to say to convey it. But it's like, it really, like, what did it add to your story? 
Uh, I actually, the more I think about it, the more I like it now because I like that the there are these hyper masculine characters, right? That are literally like symbols of masculinity in our pop culture, but being the Marvel sensitive. Man. But they have a full range of emotions, and they express those emotions. Like he's almost crying at one point; he gets all teary eyed when he's talking to her yeah. and says goodbye to her. And it's like it's nice to see a full spectrum of a human being, you know. Yeah. And I wonder if like, that's for a two, lot like of like you the, said, two characters of ma- masculine, masculinity yeah, like and, like yeah. logos of masculinity, right. literally, yes. like yeah. I guess that is a good point because yeah. they don't make them like you know complete, you know these badass, uh, you know, right? I mean, because they they're fallible, yeah, a lot of, yes. and they're goofy, you right. know, in some ways, you know. I mean, the whole thing about like Harley can't shoot a gun; it's probably because he needs glasses, and like nobody right. says that. Yeah, <laughs> like he's probably blind as a bat. Oh, and Marlboro's like a dead shot, of course, mm-hmm. right? Um, but yeah, because I think you know, as you got into these movies, like more and more, they became like the strong, silent type, right. uh, you know. The Bruce Willis later career, mm. Bruce Willis kind, of, which is weird because Bruce Willis started out uh, somewhere yeah, else, right? right. That, um, or like the Clint Eastwood, or you know, whatever. But yeah, they they do give them, I guess, uh, some personality. Is that the script or is it the charisma of the actors? It's both. It's, it's a little both, bit of both. Yeah. They do have good like chemistry together. Yeah, though. I like them together. Yeah. They're nice. They're fun. Mm-hmm. I like hanging out with them. Don yeah. Johnson. <laughs> Likes having a partner. Yeah. yeah. He, he works well in, right. that, uh, in that arena. Yeah. He's like, I can't lead a movie on my own. <laughs> yeah. Well, I need, I need some back. It's a two hander. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty good pairing. And I mean, if you're going to do it, you got to do it with the, those those names. Right. <laughs> Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. Um, there is eventually, uh, they find out that, yes, the bad guys are chasing them all over the place through a, um, the, Oh, I think after the bar gets shot up, they jump a fence and then they're at LAX or whatever at yeah. uh, the Burbank airport. <laughs> right. so there's right a whole there. chase through there and then they end up uh, on a plane cargo uh, compartment and then they get shipped to, to Vegas. And then we're in Las Vegas right. and then they go up on top of a hotel and then it turns out that, yes, they are being tracked. So the bad guys show up. And so then we get like our big centerpiece stunt from the movie, uh. which is these two guys are going to jump off the roof of a building and into a swimming pool. This only works like, in the what, movies, Like what? How many right? stories? Like this got to be like 20, this right? This is very tall. Yeah. They would be dead. Yes. <laughs> they would absolutely, <laughs> absolutely be dead. Absolutely be dead. This Sean, I watched like the movie. They made it. Max. They, mm, they splashed into that. Like they, they did. didn't hit the The stunt edges. people that jumped off a diving board. Yes. Yeah. Well, you see the guy. Yeah. It's like the two shot, right? You don't follow him the whole way down. Nope. No, you because see the one guy jumping because he probably landed in the big bounce house, uh, you know. Right, fall. yeah, the big crash pad at, at, at the bottom. <laughs> and then the other shot is them dropping. Oh, yeah, because you know. when they toss Marlboro off, like, they had to cut that pretty quick because that is a dummy-looking dummy. <laughs> yeah, you so. think? You don't oh. think that was him? No, no, no. In, within the first shot, which goes by so quick, mm-hmm. like, you can tell it's a it's more loose than a human <laughs> movie, and so they cut away from it pretty quick. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. There's yeah. One, it's barely there, but you can see I'm like, that's a dummy. For Harley, it looks like literally someone jumped off a high diving board. <laughs> like, <laughs> much more graceful entry. But... And I did have that sense when they when they ran up on the roof, and the camera guy, like, follows them around the Do edge of the roof. And like that. This made me nervous. Yeah. I'm just like, everyone's too close to the edge here. Yeah. There's a pipe sticking out. That cameraman's going to trip on that and go over. I know. I There's too much height stuff in this movie. <laughs> yep, it made, no. made my stomach turn a little Everybody bit. Everybody getting too close to an edge, yep. looking yeah. over? No, thank yep. you. Yeah, because he does, like, in, I think it's all in one shot. Don Johnson runs yeah. out, runs over, looks over the edge, and then yeah. comes back, and then the camera guy because there was a shot where they had to go there was like there's this there's this gap in the ceiling <laughs> yes. or, you know, on the roof and yep. a little walkway and all three of them the two actors and the camera guy yeah. go over this yep. and you're like i do not get that sensation out of modern movies no and it's a simple <laughs> fucking shot right <laughs> you know, but that's just that like you know the the thing you feel you feel yeah. in your stomach of, of height. right yeah well that's because every movie now is shot in a parking lot in atlanta with green screen yeah like, so yeah, there is no there is real no, perspective uh, yeah. yeah height doesn't exist anymore right like Put hype back in movies, <laughs> right, right? Yeah, and I know what, uh, put the, actors on top of buildings. But how do you know that that's real? I guess this. Why doesn't the the parking lot version give you the same sensation? Is it just well, you expect that it's? A... Did you see that article that recently came out about VFX artists talking about what it's like to work on Marvel movies? Oh, yeah. They said that they have no director of photography working with them. They have no storyboards. They are literally told like, "Here's the script," and so that's why the camera movements are so all over the place and weird and the lot physics don't make sense because it's VFX artists making it up as they go along. 
Oh, wow. Yep. That's terrible. Yep. Mar- Marvel's coming under a lot of heat right now for how they treat their VFX artists because yeah. apparently they overwork them severely and don't pay them well. And I was going to say, even like the, because uh, I always look at, you know, when you're playing, uh, well, specifically in my mind, Japanese video games, yeah. they have like the, they where they credit every single department head at, right. the, at the beginning of the video game. Yep. There's always like the director of, you yeah. know, these sequences and the director of these sequences. Yeah. There's department heads on top of right. all of that stuff. That, I'll have to find that article and we can look at yeah. it after we're done recording <laughs> it's and a talk vulture about article. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think part of it is the fact this is a movie from 1991 and we know that well they're probably on top of that building yeah that does yeah. and if the maybe. if there is uh special effects we're gonna be able to tell <laughs> oh we can tell later on in this yeah, movie yeah there's some composite oof. they did really well composite shots at the end are a little uh, i mean what could what else could they do i mean robocop oh, okay. does shit like they that. could have used a dummy instead of the well, weird composite they did at the very <sighs> end I, mean, I would have preferred get him over a dummy. The edge. I don't yeah, know. It's a diehard shot, but yeah. not done. Not like done the green well. screen doesn't look all that good. Nope. As Tom Sizemore he, eventually he gets, eventually yeah. turns into a ghost halfway yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, I was expecting him to disappear. And then, yeah. Yeah. Like, it was he's like, just going to go gonna, through? He's going to fade out as he reaches the bottom. That yeah. helicopter. But See, that helicopter is there. Why not just make it? It's a nice foggy day out. Right, so he just falls <laughs> and into the fog. No, we have to see this man hit the ground. Because then you could put Tom Sizemore himself, like just put a mattress pad under the fog and just push Tom Sizemore out of it, you know? Yeah. And who hasn't wanted to do that? <laughs> yeah, as a lot of people would, I right? Bye, Tom. Yeah. This, yeah. this movie is a real who's who of people that don't have careers anymore, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Don Johnson's out. going strong, but that's about it. Yeah. I know, because Dash Bridges, as Sean informed us <laughs> earlier, came back last year. It did. Um, so I guess, like, the, the way they wrap all this stuff up, right? Unfortunately, Marlboro Man is not going to get the girl. He does have that tearful, you know. Yeah. But he That's decides that because it's like a lot of the theme of the movie seems to be like, you know, these guys need to figure out who they are, you know, right, and yeah, come to terms with some stuff, figure mm-hmm. it out. Yeah. Yeah. And make so, some final decisions on things. And like he makes a decision that uh, he's not good for her. It's that whole because she's getting married. So he wanders out. And then it's like, OK, we got to avenge our friends. And. Take on Tom Sizemore. I was really and the gang. She'd be in the crowd when he was riding that bull. Oh, that yeah. would have been. I was so really nice. hoping like she'd be in the crowd. I was hoping for it. I was just like, are they gonna do it? Damn it! So it's, but I guess that's some of the thing is like, would that be too cliche, Probably. or is that the kind of stuff like it's cliche because we like it? We have this like pop culture idea that cowboys can't have any attachments. Like cowboys always have to be alone. Mm. We never like. Do you ever see a cowboy get like a happy ending in a movie where they like settle down with a family or like just I even mean, that, have a partner? That, like, yeah, that is like. Well, that that <laughs> is the ending of a lot of. Those yeah, movies, yeah. Is that, you know they They're, find they a way do the both. whole way through, and then at the end they get you know hitched yeah. and they got the the well, the wide open space. And, you know, yeah. yeah, I would have been okay with the cliche because, like you said, we do like the cliches. Yeah, that make us feel good. Right. Yeah. So, so it's not very challenging, but it's like yeah, you know, the predictability the the is wasn't nice. Too sometimes. challenging either <laughs> yeah. so you know it kind of fits in there i could not have predicted that the helicopter pilot was going to uh switch allegiances i mean i know yeah. that like he makes some snarky comments to uh daniel uh, baldwin at some point so you're like oh maybe he he doesn't really respect these guys doesn't well, he tell him to shut the fuck up or something like yeah because yeah. he's talking about like his war experience yeah. or something daniel baldwin tells him to shut the fuck up and yeah. then on their way to there's a big like high noon kind of uh good the bad and the ugly showdown in like this uh plane graveyard yes um where don johnson's injured and uh, he shot a couple um, times once. By Mickey Rourke actually Mickey gets Rourke. to like shoot a gun and and, and hit a guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for once. The I movie like he, he stops in the middle and he's like, "Harley, you shooting?" Like he's just making sure he's actually you know participating in this gunfight. Oh yeah, he hasn't yeah. hit anything. <laughs> right. And Marlboro's <laughs> killing all the dudes. He's like, "You shooting up there?" And Tell now him I, how much it costs per bullet. When he, yeah. yeah, they're figuring out bullet math at this point. <laughs> yeah, a lot of finance drama. <laughs> yeah, which, again, this little back and forth between. Them. I know. It's I didn't fun. know that the bullets for that gun cost that much. Like he was shooting expensive rounds and missing. Right? And with then everything they keep making the joke. Is like, and here they are, and they're spending a fortune. Yeah. As they take their machine guns and take it to them. <laughs> it's sort of a, a quick dry to it, but dryness to it. But it's funny. This is a funny movie. I yeah. like his delivery of that line, how he kind of threw it away as they were running away oh, over yeah. the debris. I liked that. Yeah. yeah, if they had pushed it too hard, I'd been like, all right, you're going for the joke. It, it should be a throwaway. <laughs> you know, running for your if, life. Yeah, if Michael Bay was directing this, they would have pushed in on his face right. as he said that. You know, right. yeah. yeah. 
No, no. So it's like, we, but we can't even really call it restraint. It's just like they didn't have the imagination to go that far. Maybe <laughs> yeah, at that, that point in time, and then like, now that we've crossed that line, it, I think that's just the way that you know anybody now would would cover it. Right. right. Um, they beat Daniel Baldwin, mm-hmm. and then they yeah. eventually they they confront um, Tom Sizemore mm-hmm. and check off his cowboy boot. Walk into that, yeah, cowboy boots. Yeah, because what's going on with that? Uh, his dad got him this pair of cowboy boots for his first ever rodeo, and like it's the only, first and last thing his dad ever gave him. Before so, my dad left this shitty earth, or whatever yeah, he says every yeah. time he talks about his dad. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, he's duct taping, him, duct taping he, yeah. him the entire movie. He, the entire movie, he's duct taping him, and Harley Davidson's always asking him, "What's up with you in the old boots?" What's and then third act, we finally figure, hear that story, and then uh, that should after the, the helicopter the guy where he shoots lit up it the out. Cigarette. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for the first time, yeah. Yeah. that sh- that should have been it. But uh, the, the the helicopter shoots out Tom Sizemore's office, which is like floor to ceiling windows and a skyscraper. Yep. And this is the year after Godfather Three. Just yeah. did that, but yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember how we get to the edge of the building. Oh, because there's like this whole thing about like you know a crisis of conscience. Like Don Johnson or Marlboro's not going to shoot the guy in cold blood. He, my daddy That's right. said you got to right. sh- you never shoot an unarmed man. Right. Then the bad guys come in, and then somehow the helicopter pilot has a machine gun on his eyes, yep. uh, and blows the whole place away. And you're like, I don't know how this is happening. But only kills the henchman, right? And doesn't yeah. hit anybody else, right? To your career spared. Yep. Yeah. Well, they hit the floor. And then there's a like fight with uh, Tom Sizemore where Don Johnson, I think, throws the gun at him because that's yep. also a joke from earlier. But yes. you don't you shoot a gun. You don't throw it at somebody. Also, another line that comes back is it's better to be dead and cool than alive and uncool. Uh, which and, uh, I like. Is that the tagline for this movie? It I really be. It should be. That's <laughs> a really it is a cool line. And yeah, there's, so there's like the dangling precipice uh, scene, you know, off the high rise where. Uh, Tom Sizemore eventually. He's grabbing the boot, and the boot finally falls apart. Yeah, finally disintegrates <laughs> in his hand. Yep, that's the goes. past. It right? saves him because yep. it symbolically he had to let go of the past yep. in order to close this chapter and yep. go forward. And he's got new heroes. boots at the end. That's right, and now he's a rodeo cowboy. So I mean, like that is kind of you know you revealed this stuff about his character. Yeah, right. Like he has kind of like oh he had growth. Yeah. yeah, I guess the part that I'm missing is like I don't I cannot imagine how these two guys met and what they were up to. Uh, well, you bet. know, seven within the last seven years or whatever. He hasn't seen him in two years. He hasn't seen him in two years. How long have they known each other? Forever, right? I thought that he fell off at the end. The rodeo announcer says something about seven years ago, he fell off and broke his arm in four places. And we're told that that was when his daddy gave him the boots Mm -hmm. seven years ago. And he hasn't seen Harley Davidson in two years. How old are these people supposed <laughs> yeah, to be? Right. I'm curious. Because it feels like they're like lifelong. <laughs> yeah. They talk, it's like, you're the only family I got left. Right. And I was like, are they brothers? But no. They're, I mean, they're basically brothers. Yeah. But you know, like one of them grew they up in Las Vegas. And yeah, right. the other one like, doesn't knew each know. Other when they were like younger, as well as the other people from the bar who died earlier, Jack Daniels and Jimmy and all that yeah. stuff. The bar is like, and that's the thing when like, we got to save the old man's bar, you know, it's yeah. like, uh, it feels like the orphanage where they all grew up. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, or at yeah, least yeah. they all yeah. hung around that place at the same time, got into some shit, helped each other out, became friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So through stuff like that, probably, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Marlboro sitting in the bar with his arm in a cast at some point and mm-hmm. there's Harley and there you go. Yeah. And they met over pool and started beating people up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. There you go. Uh, well, yeah. So then, uh, and Harley rides off with the aforementioned hitchhiker yes, uh, yes. to another wild adventure. Mm-hmm. I would have liked it if she was in the crowd. God damn it. I know. <laughs> it would have felt good because I like them together and I think they deserve I to be together. I liked their scenes together, too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. One more shot of her there. Because mm-hmm. fuck that other guy. Like, yeah. What you're saying, he, Virginia Slim. Yeah. Like, yeah. You should've, mm-hmm. should've, they should have got together. They we got together. We mm-hmm. want the two of them to be together. But yeah. Because mm-hmm. it seems like, like he's, yeah, I mean, he's making his way towards. A different path and everything. He's back yeah. to riding and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, giving up that life of crime. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Woman. I know. It's not going to hurt anybody. Yeah, it's got to be her because that's his lifelong love. Right. Yeah. 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 Doesn't happen because the movie would say like, "Well, if we did that, it would just be unrealistic, and the audience wouldn't buy it." Sure. I don't go to movies for realism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, we, one more. <laughs> that pool jumping scene is very realistic. Yes. Well, we've talked. He, he, like, he slid. <laughs> A motorcycle into a car and it blew up. <laughs> and they jumped over the fire. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. Yep. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, Trench coated assassin. They, they, that, that was just a line that they couldn't cross. They did like an <laughs> Irish river dance over fire. the fire. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was, it like was a an Irish river dance, like over the fire, is what yeah. it looked like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But do you have to see this movie to experience that moment? That You're going to find out mm -hmm. if, uh, <laughs> if we would recommend it to you. And uh, in order to do that, well, first of all, we're going to summon our mailman to read some of your mail in our interactive portion of our show. So, M Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I wonder what, like, pop culture logo he would be if he was in this movie. Like, what brand would he be? Mm. he'd be like what's the opposite of the like scrubbing bubbles things like what's like the germs they scrub away because like that's oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, he'd yeah. be the mucus guy the mucus the mucus guy yes yeah, 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 yeah. 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 or the things that live under your toenails oh wow. yeah those are gross oh, yeah that's gross he'd be the noid no uh <laughs> look he's got a little he's the got noid a little, he's rode in a little mini horse <laughs> it's like the pony express to bring us the mail. <laughs> yes. thank you igor you see he gets into the theme there you go Every week. You, every you guys week. just don't see it, but yeah, oh it's, my God. it's happening. If you guys saw Igor every week, it's amazing. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. Well, um, yeah, in order for His you fashion to, sense, surprising. I know, yeah, I know. It's <laughs> on, on point. Um, but for those of you at home who want to participate in the this tracks. <laughs> <It's just portion. laughs> I never really thought about his fashion before. I'm glad you pointed it out. Well, let's tell the folks how they can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or they can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, last week, we celebrated our 500th episode. Damn. We sure did. Saturday Night Freak Show. That's a lot. Uh, Pat Hetfield writes in to say, congratulations on 500 freaky episodes, and may you have 500 more. Most of all, though, I hope I'm around for each of them, and don't lose your edge. Aw, oh, thanks, Ooh, thank Pat. Thank you, and we hope you're around for them as well. Thanks for listening. Uh, about tonight's movie, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man, Ava Hates Everything, says, <laughs> this movie is awesome. Oh, she doesn't <laughs> she hate doesn't that. Hate everything. <laughs> she says, it's not quite Masters of Menace awesome. It's more like illegal drag race to dirty, angry sex with your cop side piece awesome, but <laughs> awesome nonetheless. <laughs> Yes. Wait, I'm sorry. Okay. What was the? It's Masters of Menace. Is Masters that a movie? Of Menace. What is that? Well, I'm gonna I look it up see. now. This is, yeah, yeah, I know you got to say that. I don't that even know that yeah. one. <laughs> Masters of Menace. Uh, Jason Madsack, the keeper of the Wall of Fame, says this movie was on in my house all the time when it came out on VHS. I must have been around nine or ten at the time, and I remember really loving it. I probably probably wouldn't let my ten year old watch it, but damned if it doesn't hold a special nostalgic place in my heart. Mm. I'd let my kid. Masters of Menace is another motorcycle gang movie. I think we're going to have to watch this soon. I know, because <laughs> we got to do a trifecta. Yeah, we do. Uh, Travis Legler says, wasn't this movie kind of like an early 2000s version of films such as Black Dog, Above the Law, and The Last Boy Scout? I kind of get those vibes from this. Like, those were the movies that the writers were thinking of. I can see that. The Last Boy Scout, yeah. Yeah, because that was mm -hmm. the same. That was like 91. Right around here, yeah. Somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Something in the water. Stay tuned for that. And freak show eventually. Yeah. So early, early nineties, early nineties. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, last week we watched a movie called Vampires Kiss. <laughs> yeah, we did. We sure did. And Grant Parrish says the movie that reminds me, Nick Cage is one of those hit or miss kind of guys. Very cringe. Would not recommend. <laughs> that's that's exactly why you should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but I th that's how you're going to come down on that. You're going to be like, I love every second of this. You're be like, ah, or it's too, too uncomfortable much. to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Action the dude. End is near. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the torment of the damn. What was the? Yeah, he's got some good. Um, action dude says classic early Cage. The only way his character could have been even more over the top is for Cage to try and make bat guano martinis behind the bar <laughs> at one of the nightclubs in the movie. Yeah. Ew. Why not? He already Did we ate say a that that happened? There was something about like him uh, and the bat, right? Like he, wanted, he wanted, wanted it to bat. be real, yeah, and it yeah. wasn't. He oh was, right, yeah, instead of a potato yeah. bat. Mm -hmm. uh, the week before that, we watched Johnny Mnemonic, and Nicholas Capriola writes in and says, "This movie was friggin' awesome." Udo Kier was such a '90s slime ball in this film. I know yeah. he went out too early in that movie, as mm -hmm. far as we were all concerned. I think. 
but he got redeemed by Blade, right? That was the yeah. Yeah. yes. Uh, Joey Blythe says it's the Matrix, except with Henry Rollins' iced tea, hand puppet voice manipulation, <laughs> and of course the poop shoot song by KMFDM. <laughs> so actually, completely not the Matrix. Yes, <laughs> very much not the Matrix. All right. Well, Michael Whitaker is apparently the only person who, like me, remembers William Shatner's Tech War. <laughs> and he says, my introduction to Tech War was on The Simpsons. However, not too long after I heard about it, did it become a TV show? And I did see commercials for a while, so I was moderately aware of it. And I think it was also a running joke on Mystery Science Theater 3000. Nice. Interesting. It was also a video game series. Damn. Multiple. How did I completely I, I, yeah. miss this Tech part War. of pop culture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing. Wow. William Shatner, the writer. <laughs> William Shatner, the writer, not the actor. Uh, yeah. not the, <laughs> the, author the author of the best selling tech war. Uh, her nails. <laughs> Jinx the Ninja writes in and says, I love your show, oh, but I freaking hate this movie. Ooh. This is Johnny Mnemonic. Ah. I remember seeing this in the theater and not being able to look away from Keanu's lack of sideburns, which apparently <laughs> he cut so above his ears. God, I hate this movie. <laughs> Dina Meyer is so hot that it's almost worth watching this horrible movie just to see her in it. Uh, just go watch Starship Troopers. Mm -hmm. Just go watch Starship Troopers. It'll be fine. He does have a high like haircut. Yeah. He's, like yeah. he's got like a back bowl cut. <laughs> so what's the opposite of a mullet where it's all business in the back and he's party yeah. in the front? Was what he, is that? Was he going for some kind of like uh, monk look or something, yeah, something like, like that? that yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> he's a courier. He can't. Be, uh, whatever. Uh, right. uh, well, that's, where they, that's where they had to do the surgery. Yeah. That's why it's all shaped and uh, Neil Gum says it's more like Johnny Moronic. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. Nice. Zing. All right. Zing. <laughs> well, thank you all again, each one of you, for writing in. We really appreciate it. 501 episodes Ooh. and more to come. And uh, now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man, starting with Michaela. What did you think about the greatly titled Harley yes. Davidson and the Marlboro Man. Well, I've been staring at this poster for many, many, many years now wondering what the fuck is this movie about? Because but like, just seeing the title, my first questions are, how did they do this? Because these are licensed names. Um, but Things are a you know, lot less complicated. Yeah. Than yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't like internet search for people using your name and likeness oh, for sorry. things. So, um, But... I think I'm becoming like a motorcycle movie person. Like between this and Stone Cold, I think like this is a, like especially like late 80s, early 90s, that transitional period motorcycle movie. That's why I'm like menace to whatever it was called. I was like, oh, I'm I'm listening. Like I'll go watch this movie. Um, I really liked it. It's weird. It's this weird little buffet, like picking all these different little genres just for like scenes or elements and then kind of just hoping it all works. And for me, it does all work. <laughs> I found it very entertaining, very weird, um, but charming and endearing. And I liked the cliches they lean into. And I liked the chemistry of the actors. And I, I just really liked it. I had a really good time watching it. I had no idea what to expect because I didn't know what it was out about at all. But like, obviously, you know what the two main characters are going to be and what they're going to be like from the title. So I guess it's kind of a genius title because it does give you exactly that. But it's an interesting concept and I like it and I like how it just took swings and did its thing and it was sincere about it. It's a very sincere movie mm -hmm. and I like that. Um, definitely recommend it. I really enjoyed it. And it's a movie I feel like I don't ever hear about talked about very much. Yeah. So, oh, it was a commercial flop. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That okay. <laughs> it did not go yeah. over well and audiences didn't like it either. Yeah, I really liked it. Um, so I'm definitely gonna recommend it. Sean, what did you think? Uh <laughs> the pull quote on the back of this Blu-ray says, lots of action, lots of bullets. Box office. That's who the quote, <laughs> that's who the quote comes from. Like, that's it. They, they, probably and their negative review, right? Yes. 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 Because it's, that was it's the just, seconds pulled. Yeah. It's just periods after both sentences. Like, no exclamation points, no excitement in this whatsoever. No. Lots of bullets, lots of action. Box office. Um, Michaela, I think you nail it. I think this is a very charming movie. Um, mm -hmm. I like the chemistry between uh i mean mostly our leads but pretty much everybody in this mm -hmm. movie um uh, i'm not going to recommend it on the fact that she wasn't at the thing at the end no i'm kidding yeah. <laughs> uh, i would that, understand that's kind of my only complaint about this it is um i mean yeah it's a funny movie it is we got to see a lot of i mean everything we talked about we get to see characters with like we said a full range of emotions mm -hmm. and 
and and things like that and wants and needs and i think uh i mean don johnson and uh, i'm turning the corner on don johnson because my experience was only nash bridges at a certain point the more i see him in the more i like him he's like he's a good actor and um especially when i see him come around in uh more recent stuff um what do we, what do we watch them uh oh, you fighting seen... cell block 99 yeah the, mm-hmm. that one and Django and chain and yeah, yeah. um uh oh god was the he one South? with uh he was the, in something i just watched yeah the really one with uh, michael um hall see my uh, yeah, from, yeah yeah oh cold in, july. cold in july, july. i'm yeah. like it's cold sweat or cold sweat. <laughs> i'm like damn it what are you cold in july if you haven't seen that movie yeah yeah so but he's really good in that yeah. yeah it's good to see him back in that stuff and it's good to see where he came from um yeah this is a very charming and and uh it's a fun movie so i'm gonna recommend it um yeah you should watch it it's uh, yeah, they kind of don't make movies like this anymore. So, I mean, yeah, I'll watch it again. I recommend you do, too. All right. It's a good but, time. I mean, I guess um, that is kind of... I, I'm I'm actually surprised that you guys liked it. I, I thought, you know, it was like, well, it, man, this is a lot of cliches. I guess maybe that's the thing. It is cliche the movie. <laughs> yeah. Right? Where a lot of it does seem like um, it was cribbed from other movie i oh, think yeah. that we're not reinventing the wheel with anything yeah. in this movie because i guess maybe that's it i feel like the writer is a fan of movies and so yeah. he kind right. of put a bunch of movies in a blender or something it's like so is that like original or you know it's like no it isn't it to me it actually symbolizes like i said it's like the twilight of of that era it's you know it's when things are heading out and it's like things are kind of becoming reused but i just like but it it fits with like uh, looking back at it now it fits with those two characters because that influences our viewing on this right now with two characters that don't like i mean don't exist anymore because the the nadir and all that stuff i know it uh i guess a lot of it you know i mean i have always liked it i think since i saw it you know in uh in in its original you know theatrical run i always liked the movie even though i always kind of felt like i couldn't really mount like a good defense of the movie because i you know it's like it's good that you liked it because now you're not like uh, saying like, well, what about this? And what about that? Because I would collapse and go like, <laughs> well, you're right. You know, it's not very good in, you know, like they will. They're all like very uh, shaky foundations. You <laughs> yeah. know, I can see how you wouldn't be able to be like, well, yeah, I guess you're right about this movie. Like, I, I, I can't argue with that. But somehow overall, I like it. I don't know. Is it just like I like the uh, the, you know, the atmosphere the because it's not, it says it's an action movie but it isn't really it's about these two guys bantering like butch and sundance for a lot of the movie punctuated by it's not like you know drop your jaw action scenes either i mean aside from i guess the the jump off the right. top of the tower mm-hmm. we're like whoa but it's but you it's know fun There's it's fun, fun. Action. yeah and then you know watching it tonight i'm like oh i get it it is a western i don't you know didn't see it before because i guess I've watched a lot of Westerns since I've seen this movie. And now it's like, okay, I see exactly what this (laughs) plot is doing. So it's, um, and yeah, I I think the chemistry of the, the the charisma of like of them and the people around them, it just kind of feels fun and light. I guess maybe that's what the problem was in 1991. You were surrounded by more movies that had, more of an edge to them and this one kind of feels like uh almost it's like a, a gentler action movie it's r-rated and you know yeah. whatever um it is odd in that way because of their yeah it's like they they're they're anti-drug which is mm-hmm. hilarious because like didn't don johnson have to do the like uh you know i remember he had a there was a a, a promo that he did about like why you shouldn't drink right because he had gotten pulled over uh, or was in a car accident or something and had to do that thing and he's surrounded by kids and talking to kids about like why alcohol is bad you know they basically part of your court sentence right is yeah. you're gonna have to go you and psa you have, right, you have yeah. speaking engagements with children now uh, yeah but I mean, you know, they, you know, they, it's like they don't want to kill anybody. I've had guns all my life, but I never pulled on, uh, pulled a gun on or wanted to kill anybody. And they, and like, they really make a, a point of like, you know, drugs are just bad and awful. We don't want to get into them. And I think there's the implication that like Harley, Harley was a heroin doesn't. addict or something at one point because sp- being at the bar, you know, got him clean. You know, right, um, right. 
So, yeah, I guess it has a sentimentality to it, both to the movie itself and to me as the viewer of it. And I think uh, for that, I, I like it um, and would recommend it. It's fun. It's a, it is fun. You know, like when Big John Studd throws him out the window and yeah. he goes into the top of that car and then he jumps down and punches him and his legs. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, there's <laughs> funny stuff in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Funny action. It's uh, it's it feels like it's one of those movies that was branded for like TNT's you know movies for guys who like <laughs> movies night you know right yeah and that's yeah. probably where a lot of people saw it you know because they didn't see it in the theater, mm. uh, <laughs> but yeah so I guess it's a three like yeah. recommendations mm-hmm. for Harley Davidson the Marlboro Man I honestly Man. don't know where Hollywood come down I, I don't know either I don't know yeah. Hey, I'm not sure because yeah. she may see the, the the movie. I'm afraid is there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or be like you guys. You right. guys. All right. Well, I guess that means uh, since she's not here, though, the freak show bylaws say that you have to watch it. Yep, that's true. Do we write that if we are down a host that uh, if there are three recommendations, you have to watch it? Like, I mean, uh, is, is that in the approval, laws? It's approval it still, of everybody yeah. here present. Yeah. <laughs> Check the contracts. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Sean. What are we watching next week? Uh, next is, week- it, is it a sequel? No, okay. not a sequel. <laughs> as much as we were talking about them. No, next week we are going to watch. 1984 is, I believe, The Initiation. All right. Slasher movie terror. Is it a slasher movie? It's. Is there's this, a killer. Is this Initiation right. like is in like sorority? Like, like, yeah, so back sorority. to school season. Yes, you're, you're playing. Uh, this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Tying it all yeah. in. All right. Yeah. See, yeah. see uh, yeah. it's Kismet. Yeah. See, this is the yeah. sign I needed. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we hope you'll join us. Until next week, then, uh, we got to pay some bills. We're going to shut everything down, and the basement is going dark. Do <laughs> you.